It's Friday. I had a busy week. I also have a bunch of things here people complained about. <laughs> or I'm complaining. I'm not even sure. This is just stuff that caught my attention, made me write it down. I did the story about the woman who was kicked out of Madison Square Garden due to facial recognition, and she worked at a law firm that had sued the place. And the owner of the gardener's family, uh, the guy who runs the place for his family, I guess, uh, had decided he doesn't like attorneys. And so he doesn't like attorneys who sued their businesses. And so he has a system set up where it spots anybody who works at those firms and kicks them out of the building. And I had said that, you know, imagine if that were you going into a concert and you bought the tickets, you went with your friends, you're looking forward to the concert, and on your way into the concert, they kick you out and let your friends go into the concert. I go, think about how upset you'd be. I actually had somebody go, um, your example about going to see a concert is completely wrong. You should have used the example of a coffee shop. <laughs> now, I can't imagine why a coffee shop would be a better parallel example than going to see a show at a place when the story is about going to see a show at a place. Uh, but again, somebody was adamant that I was wrong, and that was, that was somebody who felt strongly that I'd used a bad example. I should have gone to the coffee shop. Um, I also made fun of the fact that the guy who has that system in place at Madison Square Gardens said he dislikes attorneys because they are what causes the adversarial nature of the legal system. And I mentioned that we don't cause the adversarial nature of the legal system. Uh, the adversarial nature of our legal system goes back like about a thousand years, maybe further than that. Uh, and lawyers are part of that, but we don't cause it any more than I said weathermen cause the weather. And I had somebody get very upset by that. And they said, that's nonsense. You know as well as I do. You guys enjoy how adversarial it is because do you ever see weathermen get excited about the weather? Yes, I do. Every time there's a snowstorm coming, they lead the newscasts with, with all kinds of threats of kill three level death storms coming. We're all going to die tomorrow. Snow 20 feet deep. You won't be able to get the serum through. <laughs> yes, I've seen weathermen get excited about the weather, but they don't cause the weather. And I don't cause the adversarial nature of our legal system. And by the way, and I didn't want to get into this too heavily, but what would we have if it wasn't adversarial? What would you have if you had a legal system where it wasn't one person presenting their case against somebody else who was defending their case? What would you have? You'd probably have an inquisitorial system where you'd have a judge or somebody in a position of authority who would call somebody in front of them and say, you've been accused of this. What do you say? Ah, I don't believe you. Boom, guilty. That's what you'd have. The adversarial system is better than the alternatives. That's why we have it. But it's not caused by the attorneys. And it certainly didn't happen in a coffee shop. <laughs> oh, boy. I got a lot of feedback. And I'm not, I'm not saying I necessarily think these people are wrong. <clears throat> but I think a lot of people missed the point. I did the video about the guy who bought the brand new C8 Corvette, brand new Corvette. And the day he picked it up with the engine showing 53 miles on the odometer, with the engine having only been run 53 miles, the engine exploded. And I, I said that, you know, that's obviously a very, very bad thing. And as I was reading the article, the owner of the car said that he had given the car a few pulls, meaning that he'd stepped on it a little bit. And I had said... As an attorney, I would not have advised him to say that. I wouldn't have admitted that. Because I said in the video, the manufacturer will use any excuse they can to deny a claim. And so if you admit that you stepped on it a little bit, they're likely going to say, oh, you stepped on it, you caused this. Uh, you know, whether they're likely to say it in this case, I don't know, but I've seen it made, I've seen that argument made many times by the big three. They love it when you give them an excuse that they can hang their hat on. So I said I wouldn't have advised that. Several hundred people in response to that said, uh, Steve, modern cars have got rev limiters during the break-in period, and therefore you cannot harm the engine. Several other people posted in response to that that the owner's manual says right in it, despite the fact there is a rev limiter, you still should play it cool during the break-in period. And trust me, if you gave me that car and said, I challenge you to damage it during the break-in period, <laughs> it wouldn't make it 53 miles. 
there are things you can do to the car that will damage it. The rev limiters don't protect everything in the engine and transmission and drivetrain. And all I was pointing out was that to make your case stronger, you don't mention that you did a couple pulls on the way back to the dealership in the car. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But if you want to believe the rev limiter will save you, go ahead, pray to the rev limiter. Then <laughs> I had a guy who complained about something and then went so crazy in the wrong direction that it was actually kind of fun to watch at first, but then it became annoying. I did the story where I was talking about qualified immunity and how often it is that the police get accused of something. And it can be something crazy, like they stole something from somebody. And in response to that, they go, we've got qualified immunity. And I said, that's always bothered me because if you accuse me of theft, my first response is going to be, I didn't steal anything. I'm not a thief. And if you said, but what about the qualified immunity you're entitled to, Steve, as a police officer? I'd go, oh, well, I have that, but it's, it's irrelevant because I didn't steal anything. I would, I would defend myself and deny having stolen anything if I hadn't stolen anything. I didn't steal anything. That, to me, is a common, human, basic thing that we do as people. If you're accused of something you didn't do, you deny it. And I said, I think that police have just gotten so comfortable knowing they've got qualified immunity, they don't even bother denying the things anymore. But it also does cause you to wonder, did they steal it? Why don't they deny it? And I got this email from a guy, very, very lengthy email. And he said, Steve, um, I'm writing because you are so disingenuous with your statements that you misled people and you know it. You know it. And um, I'm not an attorney, but I know how the law works. He goes, when you bring a motion to dismiss, as you know, you're not allowed to argue facts. So the police are not allowed to deny having stolen anything because they're not allowed to argue facts. When you say, why don't they defend themselves? You and I both know they're not allowed to. He goes, you really should take that video down and put up a video and explain this to people about how you were being deceitful when you said that the police never defend themselves because you know they're not allowed to. You know that. And the weird part about it is, he then says, if you weren't being deceitful, I'm guessing that maybe you meant that they should have tried defending themselves in the court of public opinion. And the court you were referring to was the court of public opinion, not an actual court. And if that's, if that's the distinction that you were making, then you need to reshoot the video and say that. So I wrote the guy back and I go, number one, I go, you said that you're not allowed to argue facts and a motion to dismiss. You also said you're not a lawyer. You didn't need to tell me you're not a lawyer. Because I knew that when you said that you can't argue facts in a motion to dismiss. <laughs> you are allowed to argue facts in a motion to dismiss. One of the most common motions to dismiss is called no genuine issue of material fact. <laughs> there are other motions to dismiss as well where you argue facts. And you would stand up and say, Your Honor, number one, my client denies having stolen anything. But despite that, it's easier for us to examine this from the theory of qualified immunity. What do you think is going to happen? The judge is going to admonish you? You're not allowed to say that. Well, number one, you are allowed to say that. So I, I said, rhetorically, I don't know where you got that from. But the fact that you're not a lawyer speaks volumes. Because you are allowed to argue facts. But also in his email to me, I forgot this, he included a link to a case where the attorneys had said that their clients didn't steal anything. And he goes, by the way, he goes, I pulled this regarding the case you mentioned. I didn't mention a specific case. I just simply said when police are accused of stealing something, they never deny it. He went and found one case where they did. But the interesting thing is that flew in the face of his original argument that you're not allowed to argue facts. But <laughs> he said, number one, you're not allowed to argue facts. And number two, you were clearly speaking of the court of public opinion. And I said, you know, it's interesting that you're not a lawyer and you're explaining the law to me and you're explaining it completely wrong. But then you think I've confused the court of public opinion with the real court. <laughs> I've been practicing law for 31 years. I've been in almost every courthouse in Michigan. There are a couple I haven't been in, but the vast majority of them I have been practicing law. I've also 
filed motions to dismiss, and I've fought motions to dismiss. It's something that we do as lawyers. We spend more time handling motions to dismiss than we do trying cases. Because every case has got a motion to dismiss, not every case goes to trial. So I am very familiar with those, but this guy obviously is not because he's not an attorney. But then he also thinks I don't know the difference between the court of public opinion, which is imaginary, and an actual courthouse, (laughs) which is a really strange argument to make because I do know what an actual courthouse is, and I also know what the court of public opinion is, but I don't confuse them. Go into the court and make this argument. Which court? The real court or the court of public opinion? I don't practice law in the court of public opinion or practice law in the court. The real ones. The bad edits early in the morning, and I I keep clearing my throat, and I apologize. Um, But I wrote the guy back, and I said, number one, I said, you're completely wrong on virtually everything you've written. I said, number one, you can't argue facts in a motion to dismiss. Number two, you cite a case that is not necessarily the one I was referring to. Uh, number three, um, you say I confuse real courts with court public opinion. But the tone of the email was very, very discourteous, shall we say. And I said, so in response to your discourteous email, I would generally not respond at all. But I feel the need to point out to you that you are wrong on every single point here. And I laid them all out. And I said, but I don't want to get into a discussion or an argument about this. So I am now going to block your email. And I've mentioned that before. Occasionally, I will block the email of people who are harassing me. And it happens from time to time. And so I I hit send on that, and then I blocked his email. And about an hour later, as I was dumping my email out, I I, I see the headers of all the emails that are in the garbage. And I saw one that said, you say you blocked my email. (laughs) It was from him. Dump. So I have no idea what he wrote back, and I really don't care. The weird part is that someone who's not an attorney writes an email to an attorney, says you've got the law wrong and you know it, You need to take that video down and correct it because of how wrong you are. I found an example that proves that you're wrong and contradicts what I said earlier. And you clearly don't even know what a courthouse is. Um, yeah, I don't want to have a discussion with you about anything. Sorry. So that was the most annoying email I got this week. (laughs) But I like the guy who says, lawyers enjoy the adversarial system, but weathermen don't enjoy the weather. (laughs) Okay. You don't own a TV set, I guess, huh? That's going to wrap it up for this week. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.